Starting a short-term rental business can be complicated, so that's why I created a list of some pros and cons that you should consider before beginning. And on these pros and cons lists, I listed the things that I thought would be most pertinent to new-time business owners, people who don't have very much experience, and people who are just starting up the business. So the first pro that we have is that Airbnb does not require any licenses or certifications. It's pretty straightforward in that the business model is just renting out either your entire home or a room that you have and letting people stay in it. You probably stayed in plenty of hotels where you know basically the gist of things you know that you have to check in. There's a check in time, there's a check out time, you pay by the night, there may be a cleaning fee attached, but it's very straightforward and beginner friendly. Another pro is that you can actually operate your Airbnb remotely. So it's actually very common for hosts to be out of state or even in a different country while they're hosting guests in their Airbnb. And that's because you can do it remotely. All you need are automation tools like digital locks, automatic messaging setup, hire cleaners who are gonna be on site, or maybe even a co-host who can help you manage your property. And what a co-host is, is someone who you hire, you usually split some of the profit with them and they help organize and manage things on the ground for you. So they'll do things like uh, making sure that the cleaners arrive on time, making sure that they have supplies, checking in on the apartment to make sure that everything's okay, the furniture's good, or they'll also help with replacing things if you need them to be replaced. The next pro that we have is that this business model is very scalable. So like I said, if you can operate a business remotely and you don't have to be boots on the ground all the time for your business, it makes it a lot easier to scale your property. If you build enough systems for the business, it can be scalable. So personally, one of my goals is to have at least like two or three more Airbnbs in Utah and then eventually move out of state and then in the future out of the country in foreign places. So that's my ultimate goal. And that's why I like the Airbnb business model is because you can operate it remotely and you can scale it to multiple locations and it's pretty straightforward in every location that you stay in. The next pro that I have is that there are multiple exit strategies if you do decide that you want to stop your Airbnb business. What I mean by exit strategy is if you want to stop operating your short-term rental on Airbnb, you can go to other sites like Furnish Finders, which is specifically for travel nurses, business professionals, and things like that, and you can do longer term stays. And even if you don't want to do short or semi-short stays, you can do long stays, which would be like six months or up, 12 months or up, because subleasing and leasing is so flexible for you. And you could even charge an upcharge because they are furnished rentals. If you don't want to lease it for a short term or a long term, you can usually sell your lease to someone so they'll buy out your lease from you. You can sell all the furniture that you have in the Airbnb, pretty much no problem, make your money back. You can multi-purpose your home. So by multi-purposing your home, you could host other events like photo shoots, birthday parties, hosting, you know, single one-off day use things. And sites like PeerSpace are perfect for this. So not only can you do short-term stays, you can do mid-term stays, you can do long-term stays, you can do um, day use only, you can sell your lease, you can sell your furniture. Additionally, the next pro here is that you don't need much expertise or even any experience with hosting to get started with Airbnb. Personally, I had no experience with hosting before starting. I've been a super host for four times in a row now, and it's really not very complicated to operate on Airbnb. The user interface is super easy, and it's very straightforward in the business model. All you have to do is provide basic amenities, like a bathroom, a bedroom with all the normal things like a bed and a pillow and a blanket, toiletries, and a couple other items that make a stay there while it may be basic things to you, they're all that the traveler needs and it's basically all that they're looking for. The next and probably one of the most obvious pros of starting this 
is the cash flow opportunities. So once you do all of your property analysis for your Airbnb and you understand what your profit margins are after you take all of your deductions for things like supplies, restocking, cleaning, and other necessities that you need to run your business, also your technology, your hosting systems, you have a lot of cash flow that you can work with every single month. So obviously you would reinvest it to grow your business, you would hire out, you would look for other properties and other opportunities where you could spend this cash flow. And this cash flow also allows you to pay back your initial investment quicker than say a long-term rental would, for example. Profit margins are gonna be smaller with a long-term rental than they would be a short-term rental. These two next pros are things that I think are personally important to me. You get to be a part of guests' experience for life-changing events. I mean, I've hosted births, I've hosted people for birthday parties, I've hosted people for football games, for graduations, for you know coming into state for work, different things like that. You get to make sure that their experience is good and that they wanna come back and that they've had a good experience in their state. But you get to be a part of these big moments in people's lives and a lot of the times they do show great appreciation for it. The final pro that I have here on my list is that this is a very easily teachable business model. So as you see here, I'm just teaching you, this is my first time even having an Airbnb business. Like I've been experienced enough where I can teach you in a way that's understandable and in a way that you can understand, you can scale and you can replicate the process. Now on to the cons of the Airbnb business. The very first con that I have here is of course the service fees that these platforms take from you. If you don't have your own direct booking site to avoid these service fees, then that's something that you have to take into account when you're beginning. Airbnb charges a 3% fee. So this data is from ctransparent.com and it's a 2020 article that they posted. So if you do want to update yourself, just keep in mind that this is about three years old now. TripAdvisor has a 3% fee. HomeAway and VRBO has a 5% fee. And Booking.com charges a 15% fee. It's very obvious that you guys pay to be on these platforms and you should take this into account when you're starting. The second con is that it is a hospitality business. So when I say it's a hospitality business, it means that there are human aspects to it. There are guests who will be cranky or who have traveled all day and who don't necessarily listen or read your messaging. There's also cancellations, cleaners who may not show up. There's repairs that need to be made. There's other things that come into the business that are just the human element of the business. You have people who just don't take care of your place. Some cleanings will be worse than others. Some cleans won't. I've heard some horror stories about cleanings. That also means that you need to take an extra precaution to screen your guests. They have their ID, their profiles confirmed, their email address and phone number are also confirmed and that you are comfortable with hosting them. I have hosted one guest who I was kind of on the rocks with hosting and it turned out to be a very bad experience for me. That's a whole different video. We'll take that into account, screen your guests properly. And also to mitigate cleanings or cancellations with cleanings, it's always a good idea to have a backup cleaner. Hire someone and they're not able to attend, at least hopefully they can give you like a 24 hour, 48 hour notice beforehand so that you can find a replacement. But if you can't find a replacement, then it's a good idea to always have someone who's on call, who can take care of the cleanings, or even yourself or a family member who's in the area and who can help you out with that. This is also good if you have a co-host because if all else fails and the cleaner isn't able to show up, then your co-host is there for you and they can take care of the property. So that leads me into the next con, which is it is a trust-based business. So you wanna make sure that you trust your co-host and that you trust your cleaners and that you have a strong team of people behind you who can support you if anything goes wrong. You have to make sure that your co-host is reporting everything correctly and that your cleaners are doing a good job every single time so that you can maintain the five-star status on your listing. If you don't have these things in place, it's not very likely that you will get a super host status or that you will get a high rating in Airbnb because those things are so important. The next con that I have of this business is that you have to be very, very intentional with it or else it can be unpredictable. 
things like COVID, where we saw a massive decline in bookings, you know that you have to make your property and your listing as resistant to these changes as possible. So that's why you need to think about the exit strategies. And that's why I put exit strategies in the pros of this video is because if you aren't thinking of it in the beginning, you will think of it in the end. When I say you have to make your listing resistant to these unpredictable times, it means are you able to host as many people as possible and broaden your scope as much as possible? Can you host kids, dogs, business professionals, locals, um, photo shoots, day events, and utilize your property in other ways besides just the bookings. And also making sure that your pricing is constantly fluctuating based on the market. Apps or websites like Priceline allow you to analyze other properties in the area to make sure that you're being competitive and that you're staying booked. Make sure that you're being very, very intentional when you furnish your property, when you list your listing and what amenities you have to offer. The final con that I have for a Airbnb business is that you have to deal with cancellations. You can obviously set your policy to not allow for cancellations unless they're within a certain time period. Hopefully you'll be able to fill them. These were my list of pros and cons for starting a short-term rental or Airbnb business. If you thought this video was helpful for you, please recommend it or share it to a friend. Comment down below, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.